match take two. Yeah.
The secret place is like talking to an old friend that knows you better than you. Although it's hidden away, tucked under the wings of the father, there are no secrets, no unknown things to him, there is nothing new to him. It's like sitting in the noonday sun in the summertime with a breeze to cool the heat of rays shining on skin. It's like a refreshing outpouring of rain after a hot and humid season, like a breath of fresh air, a gulp of water in a dry desert. Sitting with your old friend that sees the heartache in your eyes despite you telling them you're all right. No matter what comes out of your mouth, the reality of your mind of what your thought life is really like seeps out like droplets of water from a leaky vessel, looking whole from a distance but up close, cracks are in need of attention. The place you run to when running on empty no longer can do. The place where you know your love through and through, where identity stays intact and repentance opens the door to eternal security. The place where strength on the inside is possible, where tenacity is born, a place where new beginnings can happen every day. No matter how far you may have strayed, your old friend sits patiently and waits. On the horizon, as your figure starts to take shape, he stands eagerly, a twinkle in his eye, anticipating communion with his child as you approach the secret place again. You may have gone a day, a month, or a year without sitting at his feet. And as your weary eyes look into his, as your rough and aching hands are held in his, as you open up your mouth and start to talk to him about how it's been, how you felt, where you've missed the mark, he draws closer and it's like you never left. The secret place where he always waits for you, the secret place that's always been home for you. Amen. So I think it's important that believers constantly seek and yearn to be with Jesus in a personal and intimate way because otherwise we will get used to just running on our strength, our wisdom, um, the, our perspectives, the way we see things, the way we, the way we want to execute our own things. Like I think when we when we dwell in god's presence that's when we get vision that's when we get wisdom it's when we we get direction on what to do um otherwise we'll just be walking around in our own power um and really not like no one will get saved nobody will be touched by the holy spirit no like no one will be transformed by the holy spirit if we try and do life without him and it's not just about ministry i think it's just more about how we live our lives our integrity how we how we walk in the spirit i think it's important for us to constantly constantly depend on god um asking him lord less of me and more of you i want to be used by you i don't want to just bear the name of christ but do my own thing i would genuinely want it to be um, your Holy Spirit willing me to do things and to speak to people, to worship in spirit and in truth. Without the Holy Spirit, we can't even worship because God requires us to worship in spirit and in truth. It's not possible for us to worship him without this Holy Spirit. Um, so that's why it's important for us to dwell in the Holy Spirit to, um, to let him work in us so that he can use us for other people and for his glory. <laughs>